Slothbot is the world's slowest robot. The deployment of the Slothbot at the Atlanta Botanical Garden is really just the first step. Uh, right now, it's, it's primarily a proof of concept. It's up there, it's measuring things. Uh, what we really would like to do is take it down to South America. The Atlanta Botanical Garden have a program they're working down in Ecuador, and the idea is really to bring the Slothbot down there. We're just starting to get baseline data where we're starting to, to look at the temperature, the barometric pressure, the, the light or PAR, the photosynthetically active uh, radiation, which is the light available to trees and plants, um, as well as carbon dioxide. So we're getting baseline data and that will help us then to develop and understand how best to, you know, put plants in particular environments and also what's going on in that canopy versus the ground level. I, uh, I started reading up about sloths and got more and more convinced that slowness is a strategic advantage in some situations. Not only do you become more energy efficient, but there are all sorts of other reasons why being slow is actually a good thing. The whole idea came where I started to embrace slowness as a design paradigm in robotics. You have to put somebody in the canopy to understand what's going up there. And something that's happening 50 feet above our heads in a really dense canopy, um, a really wonderful you know, tropical forest, similar to this, the, the tropical rotunda that we're in right now, is very hard and it's very time consuming and it's often very expensive. And so this will actually break down those barriers, allow us to get into places that we can't, when, when we can't put a researcher in a forest for three to six months at a time, we could put the sloth bot there instead. From a conservation research and conservation biology point of view, what it's doing, it's, it's collecting data that scientists like Emily Coffey and the other researchers here at the Atlanta Botanical Garden can use to make models of what's happening in, in various ecosystems. The more data that we have to input into a system, an ecological model, let's say, the stronger that data can, the, the stronger that output of that model will be. During the pandemic, we have seen that people who were sheltering in place, the moment they could get outside and they got to a park or they got to the Botanic Garden, they all of a sudden started to feel better and more healed. And they started to actually realize that being around green spaces is, are critical for our human health and our human nature. It is so good for our mental well-being. I'm hoping that during these extremely challenging and really heartbreaking times that we can all learn to appreciate nature a little bit more.